Fuchsia's PETG print prompts premature parting of the nozzle, Creality clogs quick, crushing clean starts, and gaps grow despite golden grade guaranteed settings. It's from a bamboo. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 195. Let's get into it. Starting off, we've got a hot end jamming after short amount of printing. It is a Creality Spider 2 hot end, Bowden setup. The rest of it legitimately doesn't matter. We've got some things the user has tried, things like reseeding the Bowden tube, replace the Bowden tube, replace the nozzle, replace it in PID tune the heater cartridge. And those are really good things to try. If you're going through where your machine is clogging early on, you absolutely want to try basically all of those things. Unless you didn't kill the heater cartridge, you don't need to replace it. But heat creep is often because, well, as the name would state, your heat, it's creeping. Oh man. The best thing to do with heat creep is look at the heat sink cooling fan. Is it actually blowing on the part? Is it actually blowing on the heat sink? Is it actually turning at all? In my opinion, the most common reason for heat creep is two different things. One, that heat sink cooling fan ain't spinning at all. Two, it's spinning in the wrong direction or it is applied in the wrong direction. These heat sink cooling fans are almost always designed to push air onto the heat sink. And if you put it on, backwards where it's pulling air away it often doesn't pull the air right from the heat sink right there's not enough static pressure on the pull side there's plenty on the push side but not as much on the pull side we see this very often with machines and it's happened on the channel before with print fix friday but another common issue is that hot end cooling fan simply dies or there's something stuck in it if you're unsure if the fan is even working properly let's say it's spinning Maybe it's spinning too slow. You can completely remove it, replace it if you want, but you could also just use an auxiliary fan to blow air across it. Heck, even a little bit of compressed air every now and then across the heatsink should keep it cool enough that you can verify whether or not it is the fan. Because this is a Bowden setup and it is some sort of Creality or ComGrow printer, the likelihood of it having an all metal hot end is relatively low. And well, that Bowden tube can be something that needs to be replaced over time. The user has done it, so we don't have to deal with it. I don't think this has a lot to do with the Z-Height, although it does appear that there are some issues with the Z-Height itself. I would want to deal with the actual extrusion first, the re-leveling, re-tramming, re-Z. That is really simple. We have videos on it. Car to first layer here, and we'll link to bed leveling in the description down below if that's something that you would like to get a little bit of knowledge on. Heat creep is a pain in the butt, and it's not something that we really like, and it can absolutely be something that you will spend days and days and days on without a real solution because it's difficult to track down. Especially because it's not always the same for every material because different materials gets off to different temperatures. You can see where this is going. It's very, very easy to get stuck. And it's something where I've gotten stuck too. Don't feel bad. I know you're pulling your hair out as it says in the post, but don't feel bad. It's part of the process. Everyone will go through this at some point. And while modern printers are getting better at determining what is actually wrong with them, they can't always determine if a fan is running or not. I'd love to know in those comments whether or not you've experienced this kind of thing before. I know I have, and hey, my name's Grant. This is 3D Musketeers and Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. It's okay. Even experienced individuals go through dumb problems like this. This is not a you thing. It's something that I want to be very clear. We actually had a really interesting fail this week of a Prusa, where the person tried to bake the build plate, and the comments were so rude that the person just deleted the post. Guys... We have a duty to not only help each other, but be nice about it. So please don't be jerks to each other because what happens when people delete posts like that is there might be someone else that's considering the exact same thing. And instead of finding that post, being able to get legitimate help, you all act like a bunch of trolls on the internet and act like jerks. And now that help ceases to exist. So, you know, be nice to people. 
don't ruin the fun for others. Leave a like, get subscribed, and if you want to troll, you can comment below. We have a whole video coming up about it, so don't you worry. <laughs> Moving on to a fan submission from Daniel D over here, looking at a really nice shot of some Prusa Orange PETG filament on a Core 1, and they're having a couple of small issues. You can see it looks like decent PETG. It is backwards on the spool holder, but that doesn't technically matter since it's a reverse Bowden system. Anyways, we can look up and see the part that they're making and how, well, it doesn't really look right. We can see the PETG itself is just not printing well. Something's going wrong here. And they're doing one of those NASA fiber mesh chainmail things. I'm going to save you the audio because it's just a bunch of fan noise. You can literally hear the fan blowing onto the camera itself. So cooling is not an issue here. It might not be running hot enough. That is absolutely something to look at. And I could be wrong, but either that nozzle has a little bit of gunk on it or that's not the stock Nextruder nozzle. So I'm not certain if that has something to do with it as well. But looking at what we can see here, my best guess is that it is running a little bit cold. I find that the Core 1 and most Prusas, for that matter, even running Prusa Mint PETG, need to run hotter than what the stock settings say. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's my area. I'd love to know your thoughts if you have Prusa printers, but we often find that we're turning up the temps between 5 and 15 degrees Celsius above the stock temperatures simply to get better quality printing. Is that Prusa's fault? I don't know. It could be an altitude thing. It could be a barometric pressure thing. Filament, especially when it gets hot, can do some weird things in different environments. So I don't blame the company, but I will say from my experience, especially running Prusa Mint PETG, and if I want to run it fast, got to give it a little bit of extra spice. Now, the thing with these models, because they have a lot of bridging and a very slight contact patch with the bed, Having a brim can be helpful, but make sure the brim is only on the outer pieces or you're going to spend all day removing the brim. If you're dealing with a build plate that isn't sticking very well, you can scuff it up. We recommend a magic eraser or melamine foam if you're not looking to spend a ton of money. We'll link to some in that description where you can get them from Amazon and support the channel while you're at it. You know, affiliate links help us out. And that absolutely helps with getting that first layer of PETG to basically weld the build plate. Basically welding to the build plate. Be careful, because if you do scuff up your plate and you put PETG on it, it does have a tendency to absolutely fuse to the plate. So if you have the ability, go over to either the satin sheet or the textured sheet for PETG so you don't end up getting stuff stuck. Don't make that expensive mistake. But further, on parts like this, we do like to run more cooling than stock. When you are dealing with very short but bridges that cannot sag at all or they're going to end up fusing, you need to make sure that you have lots and lots and lots of cooling. It's okay to go ahead and slow the printer down while it's doing those bridges or adjust that bridge speed to change it as well. I did request from Daniel D who actually submitted the video by tagging us in the description. See? Filament foibles at 3D Musketeers. I did a request to get the 3MF. Unfortunately, we haven't had it yet. So if we do get it, we will cover this again in another Print Fix Friday where I try this exact same part with their exact same settings and then make my modifications to it. And we'll share it with you guys as well. This is what we want to do here on the channel. So if you want to get some help, you can reach out to us on all the social medias. Although our new preference is that you make a video and tag us in it. I think it's really cool to see it from a better perspective. But if you can, email us over the 3MF file too. Especially if it's a machine that we have in the shop, we're able to directly test it for you and verify if it's your machine, if it's a settings thing. Because if we can get the exact same results that you have on your settings, well, hey, we know it's the settings. And if we don't, well, then we know it's something else about the machine and we can quickly narrow down things for us to deal with. And we're here to help. It doesn't cost a dime. So please reach out if you're going through those issues because we never want printer downtime here on Print Fix Friday. Moving on to a Prusa Mark IV-S, which is one of the most unique photos that I've seen of a broken printer ever. For those that don't know what they're looking at, you're looking at 
the insert for a high flow nozzle that has been pushed out by PETG. I've never done that before. I don't, I don't have a insert of a nozzle. I've never done that and talked about it in a print fix Friday video, but I just think this is a really, really unique picture and wanted to show it to you guys. This is caused by way too much back pressure. Some people say the next router absolutely sucks and it's not very good for certain materials, but uh, this is pretty much proof that it doesn't because if you can push out an insert with nothing but extruder pressure, well, that's got a fair bit of extruder pressure. Now, to be clear, that should not happen. I would think that this could be some sort of manufacturer defect, but it does depend on how long you've actually had the machine, what materials you've run through it, and things like that. Over time, things like carbon fiber, glass fiber, and even glow-in-the-dark filaments cannot only clog some of the pores, or the ports, on a CHT nozzle, but they can also wear them down and basically cause it to get a little bit loose where it is easier to press through. We recently took a tour of Bontech where they make the CHT nozzles, right? Where this whole thing is done. And if you guys do want to take a look at that, I think you're really going to like it. In fact, it's one of my favorite videos that we've done in recent months. Car to it so you can take a look. It was a ton of fun and a huge thank you again to Bontech for inviting us out. It was well worth the torture of the Sustroming editor. Roll the clip that you love so very much. Oh, so bad! To raise some money and be able to take a look at the really cool stuff that you all do there at the facility. But I will say there is probably no saving this. I have wanted to try to rebuild these. If you heat it up enough, you should be able to get the next router nozzle to expand where you can drop in that insert again. And applying some sort of anaerobic Loctite in there to basically bond the two metals together, I think would work. And I've always wondered why they don't use some sort of like high temp anaerobic Loctite, but I'm not a Loctite expert and I'm certain the Loctite experts are commenting below right now to tell me why it's not possible. Certainly some sort of mechanical staking would be nice as well on top of the insert itself, but we do recognize that long-term that does add a ton of extra work and complication to the machining process, which is incredibly detailed and unique, and at least at Bontech, using Citizen Swiss lathes, which is super freaking cool. But yeah, as far as... How to stop this from happening? There's not really a good way to do it. I would say certainly by keeping some sort of inventory of replacement parts, at least when it does happen, it's a relatively easy thing to deal with. You just swap out the nozzle and move on. But if all you're doing is printing regular PETG, this should not happen ever. But there are some use cases where it's not impossible. Moving on to under extrusion after calibration. We've got a Bamboo Lab P1P using the Bamboo Lab Basic PLA using the Bamboo Lab presets. They've tried dehydrating the filament with no change. They've tried using other materials and they still have issues with the corners. They've run the ugliest calibration test they've ever seen on a filament that has already been calibrated and tested with no change to the quality. They've checked for a clog, did cold pulls, and the filament is extruding in a straight line, which if it's not extruding in a straight line, that is indicative of a partial clog. So good job for knowing that. They dip assembled, cleaned, re-lubed. I mean, literally everything that you can think of and they're literally using the bamboo lab materials so why the heck isn't it working so we've got some issues at the end of our lines here with these parts look a little rough we can see bamboo lab basic looks like crap the overture looks like crap that extrusion test looks like crap 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 mega crap i'm looking at this saying this is a pressure advance issue Instead of running an extrusion test, because the machine appears to be extruding just fine, I think it's a pressure advance issue. Now, looking at this, the zero looks to be the best. We have a corner that looks like it lifted. So I would make certain that your first layer looks good and the bed is also clean. These textured beds have a tendency to pick up oils from your hands and they don't get rid of them easily. We highly recommend to use an ammonia-based cleaner, 
like Windex or a generic glass cleaner that has ammonia. Because unlike isopropyl alcohol, which just kind of moves the oil around, ammonia removes the oil. It's why we use it here at 3D Musketeers. We use it on literally every printer that we have, regardless of the build surface. It is non-corrosive, non-damaging to PEI, non-damaging to glass. Like, it's ubiquitous. It works great on all surfaces. But we're going to move past that corner because I just don't think that's that big of a deal. I believe this is a pressure advance issue. Pressure advance is where the extruder stops extruding before the end of the line and before it gets to corners. The idea here is that the extra back pressure can make the corner really sharp before it moves. And if we look, everything other than the corners looks great, right? The rest of the part looks great, except the corners. I've experienced a similar issue on my X1 Carbon. I've shown this to you guys before. If you look at the edge, you can see that rippling. That is a pressure advance issue. And at least on the X1 Carbon, it is due to a bad reading from the LiDAR sensor. On the P1P though, it doesn't have those features. That's part of the reason why it's more affordable. So I would run a pressure advance test. If you're in Bamboo Studio, you can run it inside of Bamboo Studio. Personally, we prefer Orca Slicer around here better support the open source rather than the closed source walled garden where you can. But if you just run a pressure advance test, I bet that's going to fix it pretty much every time. If you have any other opinions, I'd love to know them in those comments down below. I would check to make sure that the actual extruder gear teeth themselves aren't wearing down. We had that happen on our machine recently, where the extruder gear teeth were worn down so much it would basically barely grip anything. Instead of replacing it with a stock part, we ended up going to the Panda Claw, which is Big Tree Tech's all metal, absolutely Gucci, shiny gold extruder gears. And while very pretty, make sure you lube them. They have been working like an absolute champ. We are planning an entire series that is kind of around the idea of pimping out a bamboo, whether it is an X1 Carbon, a P1S, any machine, all the parts that Big Tree Tech has to offer. And I'll tell you, the ones that we've installed so far have been amazing. We just put the light on the inside and their new ceramic inserts for the AMS first stage feeder. And oh my gosh, how have I lived without that light in that machine for this long? I've used other lights like on top of the machine, but dude, they're light that just operates with the printer so freaking good. That is really all that we have for you all today. A huge thank you goes out to all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. But if you did enjoy this one and made it this far, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. Check out the rest of the Print Fix Friday series below me as we are getting close to 200 episodes. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. And while technically this one still works, it's ugly and I don't like it. I'm working on changing that about myself, but it's easy to change about the prints.